Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Quinton here and welcome to tutorial number 16. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the CSS box model. Uh, so if you guys didn't know this, um, you're now gonna know, right? So everything in HTML is actually a box. Uh, if I take a look at this code in my browser, uh, by the way, I've got the same paragraph as the previous tutorial. I've also got the same CSS as the previous tutorial. Uh, and if I take a look at this in the browser, at normal size, it should look something like this. Uh, but I just wanna zoom in real quick and uh, let's talk about this element, right? So every single element, not only paragraphs, but every single element in HTML uh, can be seen as a box, right? And that means that our box can have something called a margin, which is spacing on uh, the outside of the box. Then we can also have a border, which would be the line where our box obviously begins. And then we have something called padding, which is on the inside of our box. Uh, the best way to actually see this visually is if you right click on the element. And uh, if you're using default Firefox, you can inspect element. If you are using Chrome, uh, there should be a button called inspect. Uh, but I've got an add-on for my Firefox called Firebug. If you are not using it, you definitely should install it. It's really great. And I'm gonna say inspect element. Uh, and that opens up uh, an element inspector, All right? But if I go to layout, uh, take a look at that. That is our box. And uh, the more you hover over certain places of this box, you can see it, it highlights those uh, in the background. So we've got something called a margin, which like I said, is spacing on the outside of our box. Uh, and in fact, this might be easier to see if I go all the way back to um, 100%. So we've got spacing on the outside of the box. Then we've got uh, padding, which is spacing on the inside of the box. Right now that's set to zero. And we've also got uh, a border, which right now is also set to zero. So you can't uh, actually see that. Um, but uh, as you add, these attributes in or these values in, you will actually be able to see them, right? So let me jump back over to my CSS file. And instead of just trying to show you guys in the browser what they look like, let's actually make a visual change that you can see. So like I said, we've got something called a border. Now border has uh, very many properties that you can alter. You can alter the border left, the border right, the width of the border, all these kinds of things. Um, but to quickly show you guys something, I'm going to just use the border shortcut or the border shorthand property, which uh, we did speak about uh, shorthand properties in the past. And uh, border, the shorthand property requires uh, three values. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't require all of them, but uh, I'm gonna use three values. And the first one is the width of the border. So I'm gonna say four pixels, and that is just how big our border actually is. Then the next one is the border type. So I'm gonna set this to solid, but you could also use dotted, dashed, um, and there are a bunch of other values. Uh, so um, just go ahead and Google what all the values are. You will find a website that uh, will give you all the values, uh, but I'm gonna use solid. And then for the last value, I'm gonna pick a color. So if you don't put the color in here, by default, it will choose the same color as uh, the text that's inside the box. So because our text is uh, that slight red color, uh, if I don't place in a color, it will just by default use that red, as you can see. So now we've got a paragraph with a border around it. And um, I'm going to maybe just change the color here to green so that it's uh, a little bit more visible and then because uh, I told you guys there's a lot of values here, let's use dashed instead of uh, solid and take a look at uh, what that looks like. Uh, so now we have a dashed green border going around our uh, red paragraph. And you'll notice that uh, the border uh, is actually going all the way to the end of the browser. So it's not just encasing um, the text, it's actually going all the way to the end of the browser. And this is because there are things called block level elements and then there are things called inline elements. Um, and that is like 
a whole other tutorial on its own. Maybe in the next video, I'll talk to you guys about that. Um, but for right now, uh, the reason why this, uh, this border goes all the way to the end is because this is a block level element, uh, or paragraphs are block level elements. All right, so now that we've got the border done, let's take a look at something called padding. And uh, padding is the spacing on the inside of our box. So if I increase padding um, from, what is it now? The default was zero. Let's increase that to 20 pixels. Um, this is gonna set 20 pixels of padding on the top, the bottom, the left, and the right uh, of our box. And so now if I come back here and hit refresh, uh, you can see that we now have 20 pixels of space up here, 20 pixels of space between the border and the text over here, and then 20 pixels of space uh, between the text and the bottom border, right? And then uh, we would have 20 pixels of space over here if our text went all the way to the end. Um, and you can also take a look at that visually if we jump back over to uh, my element inspector. And uh, you can see uh, everywhere that it's purple, that is our padding. Everywhere where we've got this yellow, that is our margin. And then um, this black line over here, well, it's green now, but when I hover over border, uh, it has a black line now. Uh, that black line is our border, right? Uh, so now we've talked about um, padding and borders. Let's talk about margin and probably some of you guys are already gonna be asking, but why is there a margin there already? Because um, we haven't actually set a margin yet, but you can see the yellow spacing is a margin, right? So the thing with that is every uh, element has default styling in a browser and it just so happens that uh, Firefox by default will style paragraphs to have 36 pixels uh, of, of margin around a paragraph, but I can change that. So let's go margin and I'm gonna set this equal to, let's do something big like 100 pixels, right? Uh, come back here and hit refresh. And now you can see I've got, um, according to my element inspector over here, I've got 100 pixels of margin all the way around my element and uh, you can see that as well. So we've got 100 pixels of space here, 100 pixels of space there, 100 pixels of space on the bottom, which means if I ever um, copy this paragraph and place another paragraph, uh, second, nah, whatever. Let's not worry about fixing typos. Second para, right? Uh, let's come back here and hit refresh. And now you can see that there's also 100 pixels of uh, margin between these two paragraphs as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, basically there's 100 pixels all the way around, right? Now, uh, some of you guys might also be asking, okay, well, what the heck, uh, if I come back here, what the heck, um, shouldn't there be 100 pixels of spacing on the bottom of this paragraph and then 100 pixels of spacing on the bottom of uh, the second paragraph? meaning that this space should be a lot <laughs> bigger. It should be double the size it is now. Uh, and that uh, the reason why that doesn't happen is because there's something called margin collapse um, or collapsed margins. So margin, uh, well, uh, I don't think that's an attribute we can alter, uh, but uh, basically what happens here is uh, elements uh, collapse margins so that you don't, whenever you put in it, a value, it creates the, the same uh, the same margin all the way around instead of uh, doubling the space. If that's, yeah, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> right, so something else I wanna show you guys is that we can have different paddings and margins and borders on all different uh, sides of our element. Um, so if I, uh, let's just comment this, this text out. So if I comment all of that out, and uh, we style our element again, I can have a border on the top of our element and that can be solid uh, or four pixels, uh, solid black. I can also have a border on the 
uh, right of our element or of our paragraph, and that can be um, two pixels. Uh, I think there's a, a value called outset for borders as well. There's inset and outset, and I'm going to set that equal to red. Uh, we can also have border bottom, border left. Um, so go ahead and play around with that if you like. Uh, padding, we can also have different values. So padding, um, we can have padding top of something like 20 pixels and then padding uh, right of something like, actually I shouldn't be using right, let's use left because it's gonna be easier to see. Um, 30 pixels, all right? Uh, let's actually make that a little bit bigger, 50 pixels. And then margin as well, we can have margin uh, top of something like um, 30 pixels and then a margin uh, right of something like, well, let's use left again, sorry. A margin left of something like 80 pixels, right? Um, and then that will allow us to have different sizes on, on each uh, <laughs> side, right? So um, looking at this again, I've got a four pixel border on the top that is black. I've got a, what is that? Two pixel border on the right that is red and it is very hard to see unless I zoom in, uh, you'll be able to see that, right? Then we've also got uh, 20 pixels of padding on the top. We've got uh, 50 pixels of padding on the left. Um, we've got uh, margins. Uh, 30 pixels and 80 pixels. So the margin has 30 pixels of space on the top and then 80 pixels of space on, on the left. Uh, so you can go ahead and play around with these values. There are also shortcuts to this as well. Uh, so I showed you the, the border shortcut, which was that, uh, but then we've also got uh, padding shortcuts, which um, instead of going padding left, padding top, padding right, padding bottom, you can just type in padding as a shortcut and then give this values top, uh, it's, it would be top, right, bottom, left. So always remember when using shortcuts um, that it would be top, right, bottom, and left. And I'm going to give this padding of uh, 40 pixels on the top, 100 pixels on the right, um, 60 pixels on the bottom and 200 pixels on uh, on the left, right? And uh, by the way, margin would work exactly the same way. So if I change this to margin, uh, we could change the values as well. Uh, but let's come back here and hit refresh. And now you can see we've got these uh, paragraphs pretty much in the middle of nowhere. Um, it would be a lot easier to see visually if I had a border, but uh, you can also take a look at this in the element inspector. And I've got uh, 40 pixels on the top margin, 200 pixels on the left, 100 pixels on the right and 60 pixels on the bottom, which is exactly what I put over here, right? And the same thing, oh, that was margin. Uh, and the same thing for padding. 40 pixels on the top, uh, 200 pixels on the left, 100 pixels on the right, and 60 pixels on the bottom. Um, if you just hover over this, you'll be able to see that. Right, so that is all I have for you guys in this video. I hope the box model is now clearly explained and you guys know how to use the shortcuts and I'll see you guys in the next video. I just wanna send a shout out to my sponsors at Dev Mountain. They run a coding bootcamp with courses on iOS development, UX design, and web development, and they can teach you everything you need to know to get a job within this field, and they'll do it within 12 weeks, which I think is a rather impressive timeline. So go ahead and check out their website. The link is in the video description, and if you do contact them, make sure to tell them that I sent you. Hey, thanks for staying until the end of the video. That really means a lot to me. Now, while you're still here, there are a few things that you can do to help. First of all, if you haven't already, subscribe and watch another one of my videos. 
And if you want to help me make more content more often, or if you feel that my content is just worth paying a little bit of money towards, you can check me out on Patreon. You can also check me out on social media. I will leave the links next to me. So go ahead and click on something and I'll see you guys next time.